Hello, Pentax Tips here. Today we have one of my most favorite cameras for an overview training video, the Asahi Pentax MX. The MX is a 35mm film SLR camera that was released in 1976 as a pro-caliber, fully manual workhorse. It was released alongside an innovative, fully automatic sister camera, the ME. Just the year prior, Pentax unveiled their new K-mount with very similar sibling cameras with their release of the fully manual Pentax KX and the fully automatic Pentax K2. At the time, Pentax was competing to make smaller cameras. Between the older K and newer M series cameras, we can really appreciate the size differences between them. Not only were the bodies much more compact and lightweight, but new compact and lightweight lenses were also reissued with the M series. Some believe the M stood for miniature or mini. In fact, the MX would be billed as the world's smallest, lightest, most compact, fully featured 35mm SLR. The MX featured an all new meter. No more using those famous cadmium sulfide cells. The MX used new gallium arsenide phosphide photodiodes, promising faster and more accurate exposure readings and practically immune to temperature extremes. Being a fully featured camera, the MX had many accessories, such as different focus screens, viewfinder attachments, data backs, a bulk film loader, motor drive, and winders. Very notably, despite the MX being the very smallest of all 35mm Pentax SLRs, the MX contains the very largest viewfinder of any Pentax, film or digital. And that was being a 95% coverage of the picture taking area and at a 0.97 times magnification. Therefore, the MX has the most beautiful and exceptionally big and bright pentaprism viewfinders out there. You really feel like you're connecting directly with your subject when you're using such a beautiful viewfinder. And you get so much more joy out of the process of taking a picture. We're going to cover all aspects of the Pentax MX. Please check the timestamps in the description to jump to specific topics. Looking at the front of the camera, we have the prominent Asahi Pentax branding, in addition to the Asahi Optical Company logo engraved on the front of the Pentaprism housing. Located between the branding is this little dark window that actually reflects the current aperture reading into the viewfinder so that you can see your selection during image acquisition. And just to the side, we see the model name MX. We have metal strap lugs on each side of the camera flash sync ports on one side of the camera, and a self-timer mechanism on the other. Also, the self-timer mechanism doubles as a depth of field preview button by pressing the lever in the opposite direction. An actuator in the mirror box will stop down your lens. As mentioned, the MX contains the venerable K-mount. In fact, any K-mount lens with an aperture ring can be used perfectly fine on this camera, providing full open aperture metering. And with a cheap, genuine adapter, the entire massive catalog of M42 lenses can be used on your MX. To remove the lens, press down on the release button and rotate counterclockwise to pop off the lens. To reattach the lens, match up the dots on the lens and camera body and insert the lens bayonet and rotate until you hear a click. The back of the camera contains the eye level finder, the camera film back door, and a film reminder holder. The back door can be removed by pushing down this little hinge slider to retract a retainer pin, and the door comes right off. To replace the door, while holding down the slider, line up the hinge and then release the slider. The bottom of the camera contains our regular tripod screw mount and our film rewind release button. Here we have electrical contacts for the winder that would automatically advance your film access through this screw on cover. With the winder attached, we can continuously shoot at two frames per second. Last, we have our batteries located under the screw on cover. The MX requires two 1.5 volt silver oxide batteries called LR44 button cells, which are cheap and easily available. The two batteries stack on top of each other with the positive sign facing up into the camera. To test the batteries, simply look through and see if any of the lights come on in the viewfinder while pressing down the shutter button. Top left of the camera, stored away, is the film rewind crank. Lifting up the crank to positions releases the film back door. We have an X contact hot shoe at the back of the pentaprism housing. On the right, we have our shutter speed selector dial with 11 stops between a one second exposure and the max shutter of one one thousandth of a second. 
indicated by this small arrow on the left of the dial. Also, for long exposures, a bulb mode is available, where the shutter will remain open for however long you have the shutter button pressed down. This X, next to the 1 60th second, marks our flash sync speed, so ensure you have your shutter speed selected to this speed when utilizing an external flash. Inlaid into the shutter dial contains our ASA selection. This is an equivalent to our more modern ISO standard of film speed. You can select your ASA by pressing this little button and rotating the outer rim of the dial. Here you can select an ASA of between 25 to 1600. Next up, of course, we have our shutter release button, which is actually also a screw port for a remote shutter release. The shutter release features an extremely appreciated shutter locking switch. If you can see that little L, that means the lock is engaged. A nifty little feature of this locking mechanism can be used when shooting long exposures in bulb mode. Of course, set up on a tripod, but if you don't have your remote shutter release, you can press down the shutter and rotate the lock, and this will hold the shutter open until the lock is released. Last up, we have our Rapid Wind Film Advance Lever. This one has a 20 degree standoff angle with a 162 degree full throw. Plastic tipped for winding comfort. Above the film advance is a window display featuring our frame counter that is automatically reset when you open the camera back. Next to the lock contains a wind indicator to let the photographer know if their next shot is already wound when it's red and it turns black when the shutter is tripped. To load film in the camera, first, before you forget, set the ASA dial on your camera to that of the film speed that you're loading into the camera. Next, pull the film rewind crank up to a position where it sits comfortably and then pull up once again to release the spring-loaded back door. Place your film canister into the left side of the camera and push the film rewind crank back down in and into the canister. Pull the leader across the film runner guide rails and insert the leader into the film take-up spool. They called this design the magic needle take-up spool. It allows you to choose any of the openings between the needles, and when you advance the film, the needles press together, holding and binding your film as it advances. This makes loading film extremely easy compared to prior methods. Now you can advance your film and release the shutter until the take-up sprockets engage with the film perforations. You can now close the door you can now advance the film and release the shutter, repeating until the film indicator is set to zero. You can tell your film is loaded correctly by the rewind crank rotating counterclockwise while you advance to the next frame. Take a shot. First, if you're new to photography, you may want to watch our video here on the basics of photography with the exposure triangle. This will demonstrate how shutter speed, aperture, and ISO work together to produce an image. Here's how I suggest you take your shots. When you're getting ready to go out shooting, first ensure your ASA is set to that of the film speed loaded into your camera. Also preset your shutter speed according to the ambient conditions. You'll need a longer speed for darker conditions or a faster speed for brighter conditions. You can always come back to this step later if you need more or less light to make your exposure. Now when you're out and you're ready to take a shot, viewfinder to your eye, you'll frame your scene and manually focus. You can see on the right side of your frame in your viewfinder, there is located a circle with numbers mimicking that of the top shutter dial. If you half press down on the shutter button, a tri-colored LED exposure readout appears next to the circle. The game will be to balance the location of that LED in the middle. When in the middle, the center green LED indicates to us that we have a properly balanced exposure. On either side of the center LED are yellow LEDs that indicate a half stop off the proper exposure. The one above indicating overexposure and the one below indicating underexposure. And next to those are red LEDs, indicating at least one stop off from a proper exposure. And another tip here, if you half hold down the shutter and then move the film advance to the 20 degree standoff angle, the meter will stay on if you let go of the shutter button. So you don't always have to keep holding down that shutter halfway and risk accidentally firing your shutter. 
Okay, back to shooting. We have the viewfinder to our eye and we're going to start rotating the aperture ring on the lens while viewing the light meter LEDs through the viewfinder, stopping when we have successfully lit up the center green. If we cannot achieve a proper exposure no matter the aperture that we have selected, this is when we would need to adjust our shutter speed to acquire more or less light. And once we're happy with our exposure settings, we can now release the shutter. So those were the steps if you're using any of the K-mount lenses with an aperture ring. But what steps do we use for M42 lenses that don't have the necessary lever to indicate open aperture light meter readings? We'll have to use stop down metering to acquire the proper exposure, explained in this next section. Quick note, the lens must be capable of manual aperture selection. Many Pentax lenses have a switch to change between manual and automatic aperture, be sure the lens is set to a manual aperture control. Following steps are used when adapting M42 lenses that require stop-down metering. Ensure your ASA is set to that of the film speed loaded in your camera. Adjust your shutter speed accordingly to that of the ambient conditions. Viewfinder to your eye, you'll frame your scene and manually focus. Once we are sure of our focus, we're going to rotate the aperture ring on the lens while viewing the light meter LEDs through the viewfinder, stopping when we have successfully acquired a green light. You'll notice that while you stop down the aperture, your viewfinder will become increasingly dark, hence the name stop down metering, and why you probably wanted to achieve focus before metering. However, once you're happy with your exposure settings, now we can release the shutter. Next up, to operate the self-timer, first ensure your exposure is set correctly and your film is advanced. Now you can rotate the self-timer lever down. The amount that you rotate the lever will indicate the length of time of your timer. You'll have to rotate at least to a 90 degree, which will provide for about 4 seconds, while a full 180 degree rotation will provide for about 12 seconds. When you're ready, Activate the timer by hitting the little button that was uncovered when you rotate the timer. The gearbox will begin slowly rotating back to its starting position, and when it gets there, the exposure is taken. When you get to the end of your film roll, and the indicator shows that the correct frame count has been reached, you'll feel the film advance lever pull taut, and you won't be able to complete a full ratchet cycle. Press the film release button on the bottom of your camera, flip open the film rewind crank on the top of the camera, and start rotating the crank in a clockwise direction. You will feel the tension and you can hear the film being loaded back into the canister. And that tension will release when you have completed rewinding all the film. Now you can pull the film rewind crank up to its first position and then pull once again to release the spring-loaded door latch and extract your rewound film canister. You'll also notice that the frame counter has been automatically reset, ready for that next roll. Thank you for joining us on this Pentax MX overview training video. If you like this content and you want to see more like it, please like and subscribe. Thanks. This is actually the smallest Pentax camera ever produced.